Thank you for your music. We gather in worship as First Mennonite Church of Iowa City here in the sanctuary and also online. I'd invite you to rise and greet one another. And those of you online, you may want to send a greeting via text or email or maybe phone someone later today. In Psalm 65, we read, You visit the earth and make it abundant, enriching it greatly by God's stream full of water. You provide people with grain because that's what you've decided. You crown the year with your goodness. Your path overflows with rich food. God's plan, vision and plan is for abundance and goodness for the earth and each one of us, whether here, across the street, or around the world. And in worship, we turn and invite God to reorient us to God's way to abundance. And today in our Three Sisters series, we will learn from the bean plant. In hope, we continue to light our peace candle. And we pray, the earth cries, no justice, no peace. As our gifts grow, help us, God, to tend the garden so that all might have peace. Amen. Let's stand and sing number 101, sing praise to God who reigns.
turn to number 32. Children, this is your song. You can come forward while you're singing this song. We'll sing it three times, the first verse three times. It's good to see all of you. We're going to start with a little bit of movement that we learned last week. Okay, grown-ups, you can help us. Okay, everybody start small like a seed. We're waiting in the soil. Slowly breathe in and uncurl, growing toward the sky and kids, we can stand up for this part, okay? So we're growing. And look up toward the sky, breathe in, and then bring your hands to your heart, receiving God's gifts. Breathe in, and then share God's gifts to your left and to your other left and turn to look at the people around you, giving them a smile or a nod, and then give yourself a hug. Nice work. Last week, we talked about how sometimes we're good at one or two things, and we share those things we're good at, with people around us, right? Is, is everyone good at everything? Yeah. No, we, we all have things we're good at, like a gift that we, can, that we can share with the people around us. And I said last week that we would learn about three plants in God's good creation. Each of these plants has a unique or special gift, something that it's really good at. And when these three plants are put together, when they're planted together, they share their gifts. Do you have any idea what these three plants might be? We've sort of mentioned them. There's maybe a clue behind me. Ruby? Corn. Corn is one of them. Any other ideas? Beans. Beans. Is that what you were going to say too? What was the other one? And squash. Hot dogs are good, but they're not one of our plants. Corn, beans, and squash are our three plants. And sometimes people call them the three sisters. Spinach is a plant. It's not one of the ones we're learning about, but that is a very yummy plant. You're right. Today we're going to talk about beans. Do you see right here on the pulpit? It says beans. What do you know about beans already? Yeah, look at this, look at this picture. Oliver, can you point to the beans in the picture? So here are some beans down here, but there's also some beans hiding. In the middle. They're growing in the pods, right? Okay. Beans like to grow on things. Some beans have vines that they twist around other plants, and that helps them grow up, up, up. And then they grow their little fruit, the beans, in the pod. Well, sometimes we call the thing that comes from the plant a fruit, even if it isn't a fruit. Like a carrot. Yeah. Okay, but a bean has a superpower. Do you know what the bean's superpower is? Its gift. With its leaves and its stem, it collects nitrogen from the air 
and it gets that nitrogen down into the soil and it fertilizes the soil. Which were the two plants that were planted with beans that we're talking about, Ruby? Corn and squash. And do you know what corn and squash need to grow? They need nitrogen. So the bean is just quietly going about its business collecting nitrogen and making the soil more fertile with the nitrogen, and it's helping the other two plants. Okay, this might be kind of a silly question, but who are the beans in our lives? Who are some of the people that make your, your life richer or better or our community? Who are some of the people who might be like beans? I heard that. Parents. Parents are beans. They see what we need. Brothers can be beans. They can see what we need and help us get that. What about teachers? Teachers could be beans. They, they help you grow and learn. Let's see. I wrote another one down here. Oh, pastors can be beans. We have our very own beans over here. They can see what we need, and they can help our community to get what we need, and it helps us to be stronger. So the beans in our lives could be people that just quietly go about making the community stronger, and we might not even notice that. All right, I have something for you to take home. We're going to do just a little planting, okay? You're going to get a clear baggie. You maybe have done this before with a damp paper towel in it, okay? And we're going to put some beans in here, and then when you take this home, this week plant it or Tape this bag on a window with your parents' permission, of course, and you can watch the beans take root and start to grow, okay? There's no soil, so they wouldn't, the bean plant wouldn't be very happy for very long in here. So you, when it starts to grow, you could put it in the ground, right? Okay, let's do some planting real quick. Okay, open up your bag. Oh, good. I have some plenty for you. Here you go, Abram and Nuria. Okay. It is damp because they need water. Okay. Open it up, and then we're going to put a couple beans in your thing and then seal it up again, okay? Okay, seal it up. These are, these are pinto beans from Idaho. You got some? Okay. Okay, zip it up. We can put them in here. All right. Let's pray once we've planted our beans. Okay. God of the nitrogen... And the bean vine, thank you for giving us eyes to see and ears to hear the world around us. Bless our hearts and our hands as we work to make our community stronger with our gifts. Amen. Now next in our service is offering. We get to give some different kinds of gifts, gifts of money. And do you remember what Ruby and Abram gathered in the cans last Sunday? You remember what it was? Coins for camp. So dig deep in your pockets. Down the center aisles, Oliver and Sophia will be gathering coins here. And Jay will be gathering coins over here. You can send them to the edges of your rows and they'll get in the cans. And the ushers, at the same time, will be bringing regular baskets around on the outside that will still be passed. Clear? All right. So if you are my offering helpers, you can go find your wagon. And if you are going to take your bean home, you can go find your grown-up.
Let's pray. God of abundance, thank you for the sound of generosity, coins that when added together will bring both joy and safety through pool toys, life jackets, and LED lights for Crooked Creek Camp. Your generous provision for our needs invites us to be generous in return. Accept these gifts for your kingdom of abundance and enough for all. Amen. Our foundational scripture for this worship series comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 4. And each Sunday we will hear it and receive it from people of different age groups from our congregation. And so this morning, Ruby and Elsa will share the scripture passage. The scripture today is from Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though, two, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Please turn to 522, oh blessed spring, 522. Turn to 759, take my life and let it be. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 5.
the three sisters, corn, beans, and squash. They complement each other. They support each other as they grow, providing needed structure, shade, fertilizer, insect and animal protection, and moisture retention. The three sisters became a metaphor for how to live a well-balanced social and spiritual life. Through observing the interplay of the three sisters, people were able to recognize how important diversity is in our families and communities. And today we focus upon the bean, the gift of the bean to the three sister triad. At first, it may appear that the bean is kind of a, a leech hanging on to the strong, stately, reaching to the heavens corn stalk. The bean does not reach as high. It does not block the wind. Our taste is sweet as the corn. And the bean does not ward off predators and conserve moisture like the squash. It is not as tasty and not as full as nutrients. But the bean does contribute to the sisterhood in some essential ways, making life better for corn and the squash planted beside her. Both corn and squash are not capable of capturing nitrogen from the air. And the lowly bean does this underground, providing a needed haven for bacteria, which convert nitrogen into air in nodule form in an oxygen-deprived area that the corn and the squash don't do well in. This nodule of nitrogen the corn and squash can use. The bean is not as sweet, not as good at storing sugars as her sisters, but her gift to the well-balanced diet is protein. Our bodies need more than sugar. Protein is essential for our muscle repair and strength. Metaphorically, the bean does the dirty work of the sisterhood underground. It sends its taproot deep. It captures nitrogen working in conjunction with bacteria in oxygen-deprived space. In I can't breathe kind of space. The bean does this hidden work, and the sisterhood benefits. We benefit from the protein-rich contribution of the bean. Where in our lives is the hidden work being done in oxygen-deprived spaces? In my family, I discovered a hidden secret. In my grandmother's Bible, which I inherited, being the pastor of the family, I looked at the family table, and my great-great-grandmother had no name. In fact, she's not even listed. Only my great-great-grandfather is listed. Uh, a, man in, uh, a man named Conant, who was uh, a French Métis. You see, my family was ashamed of his spouse who was aboriginal, a full-blooded native person. My family was ashamed of her at that time because she was Lakota, or Anishinaabe, or who knows what. Today we celebrate the three sister wisdom from our aboriginal sages. And I can't help but wonder what my great-great-grandmother would think of this happening in the white people's church. I imagine her as a bean, working silently, namelessly, underground, in the oxygen-deprived space, fixing nitrogen, laying foundation for a time such as this. European farmers put the corn in a field, the corn in a cornfield and the bean in a bean field and the squash in its own patch. But as our sacred text said today, 
A three-strand cord is not easily broken. There is strength in the diversity of the three sisters, yet we are prone to neglate, uh, negate and neglect the oddities, the different ones, the strange ones among us. Who are the different ones around you? Those your family wants to erase. Who enriches the soil around you? Whose soil do you enrich with your uniquenesses? Please stand and turn to 377. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. your hymnals and turn to number 1002. 1002. Let's pray this prayer together. Gardener God, you have planted and protected us by your faithful hand. Send us the sap of your grace from Christ the true vine, and make us blossom and bear the fruit of love as a sign of your life in us. Let the sweet fragrance of the shoots you have planted give you praise forever. Amen. The earth cries, no justice, no peace. As our gifts grow, help us, God, to tend the garden so that all might have peace. Amen. <laughs> 